Good evening, cowboys, cowgirls, and outlaws. Welcome to the Slick Six Guns Network. I'm your host, Slick Six Guns, and I'm here to provide education, tips, and community for those interested in the Western shooting sports. If you're interested in stuff like that, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Now let's pack our wagons and see what's being discovered out west. Good morning, cowboys, cowgirls, and outlaws. Welcome to the Slick Six Guns Network Facebook page. I'm here tuning in and I hope you are too and we are going to have our coffee and conversation so I hope you guys are ready it's gonna be a good episode and we got a lot of stuff planned for today so make sure that you guys let me know where you're tuning in from what you are drinking and obviously <laughs> enjoy watching the video so I just want to go ahead and let you guys know thank you So, <clears throat> want to also let you guys know that uh, we are going to have a conversation about some firearms. At any point in time, you can always ask me questions about what uh, that firearm is doing or, you know, what I use it for or whatever. But typically, what I'm going to talk about is what I bought it for, how much I paid for it, what I currently use it for, and uh, what my opinion is of this weapon so keep in mind that I'm gonna try and keep on track with those four things during this live stream if you like this content make sure that you guys go ahead and buy me a coffee and you could be considered a sponsor of this episode if you want to be a longtime donator go ahead and uh, go to that patreon page as well I have a link down in the description check it out all right so for those of you who don't know I just recently had a birthday so yes happy birthday to me thank you um, you know it was a good birthday ended up enjoying some stuff and you know we got some good things so or I got some good things I should say and uh, you know it was a busy birthday as well I ended up doing a lot this last week and as you guys know from my live streams I've been kind of having an ebb and a flow uh, this week is going to be more of a flow, I hope, uh, so you guys are going to see more of this, and we'll actually have a chance to uh, build more community. Uh, once again, uh, more on this Facebook page as uh, it continues to grow. I also uh, hope you guys are enjoying the content, and uh, before I get continued much further, I'm going to go ahead and show you what we are going to be talking about today. Mind you, I'm actually kind of doing a reshoot of this video, and I'll explain why. But here we go. Here is my Uberti Winchester replica of an 1873. Or Uberti replica of a Winchester 1873, I should say. But yeah, and she is unloaded for you guys out there. And type it down in the comment section. I know who you are. Um, so, let's go ahead and go... Uh, from the from the butt and then we'll go all the way to the end and I'll kind of talk about that and then we'll go ahead and get into the rest of our conversation today so we got a nice crescent butt plate here all blued the standard kind of stock grain that you're going to see on your birdies all the imports of the replicas got a color case hardened lever with a nice marbles tank sight which is an add-on and I'll get into that uh, you got a color case hardened hammer color case hardened frame with a blued um, with a, uh, a blued uh, dust cover sorry couldn't think of the name for a second once again kind of on live stream you have a tendency to lose where you're where you're at sometimes and going down to the barrel, it's octagonal with a forend that is kind of a standard grain once again to match the stock here. It is in a pistol grip, I showed you that. Um, we got a nice little cap here that's blued. The rest of the barrel is blued and octagonal and it's a full length magazine. 24 inch barrel. And I actually did add on an aftermarket speed sight. This is nice and fat. Uh, as you guys can see, it's not doesn't look like your standard front sight where it's very narrow. 
um, that definitely helps it when it's used for speed so and we'll get into that here in a second but yes and uh, just to go ahead and show you guys I also changed out the elevator and the uh, lifter so it is an aluminum lifter it is not the regular brass lifters that you're going to see on the originals or on the replicas so uh, I did do a few things to this rifle if you guys noticed I actually added on a short stroke kit here so you can see that the uh, that it's got a short stroke here so nice anyway and I also have a leather wrap a lever wrap here as well I didn't show you guys that and it's got a straight trigger instead of the regular curved trigger so you can kind of see that this gun has been uh, worked on modified a little bit and we'll go ahead and get into that here in just a second so let me go ahead and grab my coffee and we'll go ahead and continue the rest of the conversation how are you all doing today uh, go ahead and support your local coffee shop by any means they always have good coffee going you know this local coffee shop has always been awesome I enjoy them and uh, they're just local to our area they make good coffee and they're cheaper than the competition so good coffee plus cheap as long as they're able to keep the prices low because they still make business I'm good anyway alright so let me tell you a little bit about this rifle, how I actually came into it. First off, I'd like to go ahead and tell you that uh, I am remaking this video because I did have a video on this particular rifle on this page and I was going to post it on my YouTube channel and unfortunately, uh, for some reason, I could not download it. I think for some reason someone either barred it or you know wanted to censor it or something like that and it, either way whatever happened I wasn't able to download it so I'm remaking it but you know I figured it couldn't hurt you guys probably want to see more rifles anyway and maybe you guys really like seeing this rifle and me talk about it so I'm going to talk about it again all right okay so why did I get this rifle well I got this rifle because I like 1873s, I have an original, I have a Moroku replica Winchester that, you know, has the Winchester name on it, and I obviously wanted to kind of have the trifecta, uh, so I ended up getting a Uberti 73, and I also wanted to do certain things to my Uberti 73 that I didn't want to do to my originals or my Moroku um, just because of the sheer fact of I had a lot of aftermarket options not that in recent years I haven't necessarily kept up with the market and seen if someone's come up with aftermarket options for a Moroku or the originals for all I know the uh, aftermarket parts that work in here might work in an original I'm not sure I haven't tried let me know in the comment section if you have. Maybe you can enlighten us all. Um, you know, I will say that I just didn't want to modify any of my other Winchester 1873s. So I did want to buy this strictly for modification. Um, you know, it's got a lot of things that has been done to it, and I'll talk about each little modification as best I can because I'm sure some people are curious because you're going to wonder... How much is the rifle actually worth now that it's been worked on, and how much was it when I bought it? Well, I'm going to tell you that. Um, so, I can tell you that uh, I bought this for competition, and I bought it to modify it. That's why I wanted to go buy it. So, whatever your reasons are, it doesn't matter to me. Maybe you want to do the exact same thing I did, and I will say that I am actually pretty happy with the result. I'll leave that in my opinion. But, you know, maybe you have a different opinion. That's okay. All right, so um, that's what I got it for. How much did I pay 
for the original stock gun. This is no modifications, no nothing. Um, I will say that I paid less than a thousand when I bought it, and the rifle is more than a thousand now. <laughs> so, um, you know, I probably paid about nine hundred, nine hundred fifty dollars when I when I first bought this rifle. Um, you know, I think. I think it was well worth the money at the time. I think when I bought it originally, they were going for 1100 to 1200 at the time. Um, you know, now they're going for a little bit more than that. So for me to get it for 900 950 I was really happy with that. And knowing what I was going to do to it, it wouldn't necessarily bother me if something got messed up. Uh, maybe that's not you, uh, but my budget did cut, incorporate that, and there you go. So I decided to use this and modify it with the price that I bought it at. And what did I decide to do to it? Well, let's start. First thing is I wanted to build this as a race gun. So a lot of people are going to have their opinions out there about what should be considered better or best or whatever. And I'm not going to say anything's better or best. But I am going to say that the race gun that I made this into... I am happy with it. Uh, I guess it really doesn't matter what brand it is, but I am happy with the modifications I have done, and I'm going to talk about those right now. So, I have added a lever wrap here so that my fingers could actually grip the uh, lever and make sure that everything was, uh, you know, could run a little bit smoother. I guess I could have a little bit more of a rhythm, if you will. I added that marbles tang sight here, which I've seen it before, I've seen it done before, and to be honest with you, I'm happy I did because it allows me to focus on my front sight. And especially with the distances that I'm shooting at, I can just basically put my cheek down to the rifle, look down this, get a really quick snapshot onto what I'm shooting at, and adds for faster follow-up shots. Uh, fast initial shots, faster follow-up shots. So. I think it works for what it was intended for also which was to make this more accurate out to longer distances. Uh, have I taken it out to longer distances? No. Does that mean that it is capable of reaching longer distances than I would have if I didn't have this? Yes, theoretically that's what it's supposed to do. So, but because of the tank sight here, I have a ghost ring, I'm able to snap onto targets really quick and up close. and just fire away and I really like it. Yes, it is an expensive modification, but it is worth it. You have to do a little bit of smithing and a little bit of work on it because the because the tang does not come drilled and tapped 100% ready to accept this sight. So you're going to have to actually um, you know, make your own screw hole for it so that you can add the second piece. Um, so that takes a little bit of time and effort and energy. So not only is it going to be expensive to, to buy, but you're going to have to drill and tap things. So, you know, to change it. Going over here, I'm going to go ahead and open up the lever. You're going to see that there is a straight trigger here. Okay, that is a modification that is so that your finger doesn't have to go as far back as the original stock trigger so that you can basically keep your trigger finger on the trigger while you're levering and then as you close it you're just able to sorry this is a weird angle there you go so I haven't quite practiced enough to where I have trained myself to keep my finger on that trigger uh, some people do I have not, but that is what it is designed for to allow you to basically keep your finger there planted and then just as soon as you close the lever, you're able to fire the weapon. Um, good modification. I like it because I like the wider trigger set. Uh, it allows you to get a pretty good grip on it and it does its job. Um, the other thing I've done is I've actually lightened the lever safety here. Uh, when I got this thing, this was extremely stiff. You had to put some real pressure on that. But if you look at that now, I'm barely even, barely even touching it. Barely even touching that safety. And uh, 
what that's meant to do originally is to keep you from going into out of battery discharges um, which is a good safety to have uh, because that is something I would not want to have happen to me so this design is a good design and it works but it just works better because I don't have to put as much pressure to close the lever and get the weapon in a battery so it works for me I know that some people decide to remove that altogether I you know I am not really comfortable doing that so I am not going to do that so I just decided to replace the spring in there with that safety and it works great so there you go um, what else have I done to this thing okay as I said I have actually replaced altogether the aluminum uh, the brass uh, lifter and I've replaced it with a aluminum carrier aluminum carrier lifter whatever you want to call it um, just makes it a little bit lighter so that it's just able to go up and down a little bit easier you know do a little smoother as you guys can see I can lever it relatively fast so you know without really moving much um, you know in the firing position it's a lot easier to lever so that works uh, I like that modification it helps a little bit I think it also helps especially when there's a round in the um, when there's a round in the actual lifter getting ready uh, kind of you know even with that added amount of weight of the round itself it still is even lighter than it would with just a regular brass carrier so I've also said that I have added a um, short stroke kit so yes what it does is essentially shortens your lever throw so you know uh, I have not measured how far that distance is but it is relatively it is short compared to where it was because the lever was actually more like right here before so definitely the short stroke kit works great I like it obviously gone in and kind of polished the internals uh, to make it a little bit smoother um, I have lightened the mainspring as well so I replaced the mainspring and lightened it and I also lightened the uh, lever the lever spring and the lifter spring as well so that works um, I don't think I replaced anything in the magazine tube that's probably one of the few modifications I did not do I know that some people like to take off the uh, dust cover just to aid with levering the rifle um, I just don't want to do that that's just me the let the dust cover can be manually pushed back prior to using so I just don't remove it but you can if you want to do that I just didn't want to um, and then I have removed the rear sight back here that was the where the original rear sight was uh, it was a buckhorn rear sight and you can uh, replace it with just a regular um, piece of metal uh, that can actually conform to that area. Uh, I just have not done it. I don't really have a desire to do it. Uh, if you go down here, as I said, you're going to go ahead and see a modified front sight that is actually thicker and stronger and, uh, you know, obviously a little bit bigger so you can snap onto targets really quick with that um, but overall that's pretty much what I've done to this rifle uh, to make it a race gun if you will and I know I'm not probably listing all the modifications you can do I know that some people can uh, make the um, firing pin extension lighter um, you know and uh, I guess you know they can make a lot of other things lighter but I haven't done any of those modifications um, this I will say this this is probably the fastest that I have ever gotten with so anything that I try to speed shoot this is my go-to rifle and it works just fine as it is intended um, obviously like I said I haven't really practiced a whole lot I don't really practice a whole lot um, but as far as the competitive edge that this rifle gives just being with the modifications it has 
it works fine for me. Okay, that's enough about the modifications. I'm sure you're all extremely well informed now of how my rifle operates. So, you know, it's not the ideal length that some people would want. It's not the 20 inches that some people want. It's 24 inches, but you know, it's what I could afford and it's what was available and I could still do the modification. So I don't mind a bigger rifle. That's fine with me. All right. So with the modifications and all that, I told you I paid about $900, $950 to get everything, to get the rifle itself. Now, with all the modifications and the man hours that went into making those modifications work, I would say that this rifle is somewhere around $1,600. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm just going to say that, you know, that's how much I think that this rifle is worth. That's my opinion, <laughs> based on the amount of hours uh, that were put into it. So, and the amount of modifications that went into it. So, you know, and I, like I said, I'm not listing all the modifications that can be done to this thing. I'm sure there's a lot more out there that I don't know about, haven't tried. I'm just telling you what I have done to my rifle. Um, so yeah, <sighs> up the price a little bit more because of that. Anyway, um, what else am I going to tell you about this thing? So I told you what I bought it for. I told you how much I paid for it. Now I'm going to tell you what I use it for. Well, you know, I bought it for the intention of modification, and I do use it as speed, as a race gun, speed rifle. It's the only rifle that I have that I use specifically meant to be the competitive side of me. Um, so I know there's a lot of people out there uh, in the cast community that may or may not buy more guns just because they want to use that one gun, modify that one gun, they spend enough money on that one gun, and that is fine. Um, I'm sure there are people like that. And then I'm sure there are people out there that are like me that want to have a race gun, a stock gun, a uh, certain other type of firearm that is more historical and they don't take it out there for speed. They take it out there because they just enjoy shooting it. And that's the kind of person I am. That's the kind of competitor I am. But when I want to go fast and I want to be on the competitive edge and try and really get the fastest time, this is the rifle I am going to take out. Um, mind you, that doesn't mean that I'm not fast with my other rifles. I think I'm relatively competent with them. I think I can have them hang with a lot, um, you know, a lot of when I want to get better. So I will say that I've gotten faster with my stock guns overall, um, you know, and that's just because of the years I've been shooting this sport, and it has to do with uh, the use that I have and the, the manual of arms, if you will, for those particular style of weapons, you know. You kind of learn the tricks of the trade. Um, anyway, so that's what I use it for. And yes, I have shot it. So, and this is in 45 Colt, by the way. So if you are a fan of 45 Colt, then, you know, they do have these rifles chambered in it. They also have it chambered in other things. And I will get into that uh, probably in another video. So you guys can go out there and enjoy your 45 Colt in your pistol rifle and enjoy it all the day. Um, so let's get into my opinion. Got to have my cup of coffee first before I give my opinion. Because, God forbid, I give my opinion and then somebody gets fired up. Anyway, my opinion of this rifle. Um, is this my favorite rifle ever? No, it is not. It is not. Um, I actually have my... 
I'd have to say that it's a toss-up for my favorite rifle with other guns that I have. Some of you guys have seen it on the channel. Uh, one of my favorite rifles is my new original Henry. And then I have another rifle that I would say is a very close, if not my most favorite, and it's more because of its rarity, is a Colt slide action rifle in 4440. So those two are contenders for the top pick as far as rifles are concerned. So this is not my favorite rifle, but it is a favored rifle. Does that make any sense? It's a favored rifle for a specific use. Um, you know, is this the fastest gun I own? Uh, without me behind it, yes it is. <laughs> I would say that. Um, it is the fastest gun I own because I have modified it the most. I've done everything to it that I can physically do. Um, and it works and runs great. So, yes, I think, in my opinion, this is my fastest gun. Um that I can actually shoot, transition from target to target, not have a problem. Um, you know, I would say it's close between my 66 and, and this gun, but the problem that I have with my 66 is the lever safety, the lack of one. So the fact that it doesn't have one kind of causes me to second guess before pulling the trigger and therefore slows me down a little bit because I have to take that conscious second to make sure that that lever is all the way closed before I discharge it. This thing, I don't have to do that. So that is a very good thing. Now, that being said, as I said, I have two other 1873s. I have an original and I have a Moroku. They are both stock. My Moroku 1873 is a very close competitor, even though it's stock. But it is still not as fast. There you go. I said it. It is not as fast as this 1873 right here. Now, mind you, practice. Mind you, um, yeah, I would say barring practice. Now, if I practice with that Moroku every day, I'm probably going to be faster with that than I am with this. But as of right now, at this point in time, this is my fastest gun. Fastest rifle, I should say. Okay. Um, what else? What do I think about the aesthetics? Um, I think Uberi does a really good job. And I think that they produce a very beautiful piece. I have no real problems with it. However, I am not... I do not think this is the prettiest rifle I have. Um... You know, I think the quality of work is good. I think that, you know, for what you can do to it, the quality is good. So I would say, you know, the the the, uh, the aesthetics of my entire collection is not the prettiest rifle, but it is a pretty rifle. So that's what I will say. Um... It's not the best color case hardening I've seen, although it does a pretty decent job. You know, I have some color case hardening that is extremely rich, beautiful, and looks good. And to my knowledge, I don't think they really do a real color case hardening on these. I think they make it to look color case hardened. Uh, but it's still decent looking. It's not bad. Um, what else? Maintenance wise, relatively easy. Uh, it's one of the easier rifles that I have for maintenance. I can disassemble this thing really easy. But then again, that also comes with time and experience. So, you know, as far as maintenance concerned, it's one of the easier rifles to clean. So I like that as well. Um, you know, we're not talking about accuracy. We're not talking about uh, you know, a whole lot of other things, but overall it's just, it's a good gun. I've really got no complaints about it. Um, you know, 
I bought this for a specific need and it fits that need. So that's good. You know, to each their own is what I say. So once again, that is just my opinion. This is not a 100% review. Mind you, on my YouTube channel, I do reviews in which I try to give a statistical analysis of what I think a firearm places in. Um, you know, and I try to compare different things and, you know, actually compare it. Uh, but I'm not physically comparing it in front of you. I am just talking about it. And I don't think that's really fair to the rifle to just say, well, I don't like this and I don't like that. Um, you know, for X, Y, and Z without actually showing you. So that's just the way I do things. So I'm just going to give you my opinion and it's not a review. That's the way it is. Anyway, let me know what your comments are in the comment section. I'd love to see it. Um, you know, uh, what's your opinion of the 1873 replicas by you, Birdie? What you guys think of the Morokus? What you guys think of the originals? Because eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a comparison of all three all together. Maybe even do a versus video. You never know. Let me know if you'd like to see that. All right. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. The description section is a link to our Patreon account if you feel like supporting us. Don't forget to buy me a coffee as well. Oh, it's cowgirls and cowboys. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. And if you're looking forward to the next video, I'll see you on down the trail. Have a good one.